three, two, one. What is up everyone? My name is Captain Giorgio and today I want to teach you how to post on Instagram using the highest quality settings from Affinity. Alright, so let's hop on to it. A couple of things to consider is that Instagram is a web-based platform so that means they're going to do everything in their power to compress images in order to make their platform run as quick as they can because again we could all be posting up super high quality images to this website but it will ultimately ruin the user experience so in this video I want to go over with you some things you should consider when you're exporting your images from Affinity so, so that you can post onto Instagram alright let's get into it so if you have your picture already prepared for editing and you have it on JPEG and you want to bring it over to Infinity, all you got to do is just drag and drop your image or you can double click on the canvas and it'll open up a window for you to select your picture. Another way is to go to file, open, select your picture and boom it's there right? Um, but what if you want to crop it so that so it matches the, the ratios for Instagram? So there are three popular formats in which many people post on Instagram, right? There's the landscape format, there's the portrait format, and then there's the full range format. These are some of the supported aspect ratios that are supported on the Instagram platform. You have the 1 by 1 aspect ratio, which is pretty much a cube. The 1.91 by 1, this is for landscapes. You got the 4, 5, 4, 3, and the 3, 4. These are meant for portrait shots. My preferred way of cropping images is by first laying out your document first and then dragging the image afterwards. So then that way you know what kind of real estate you'll be working in. If you want to create your own file template for Affinity, all you got to do is go to File, New, or just press Ctrl N or Command N on Mac. And then from here, you just got to click on the plus sign and you have yourself a new preset. But in this case, I want to make it 1080 by 1080 pixels. So a square. Now I just click on plus on the custom and there it is. If you want to rename it, just right click it, rename preset call this IG square preset and then just press OK and that's it but one thing to keep in mind as well is that you know screens are gonna get bigger in the future resolution is gonna increase in the future so you know that's why aspect ratios are important because then you can just double the length and the width moving forward when things are getting you know crispier so that that way you'll stay ahead of the game alright so in this case we'll set we'll set it to the full blast 1080 by 1350 so here we have our document we're gonna bring our image over so here's the picture that I've edited it's really big obviously too big for Instagram and so now here's where I just go in there and perfect my my posture right that's right that's where I perfect what is it that I want to show in this post so I want to show a little of this a little bit of that too so let's just say I'm okay with that um, right, and let's say I want to straighten this out more. So I just click on my picture, go to the crop tool, which is the fourth one down here, and then click here with says strain. I'll draw my line. So I'm just telling Finity that hey, you see this line here? I want it strained based off this line. So once I let go, you're gonna see that that took place. I hit apply, and there we go. It's more or less straight, but I want to perfect this. Actually, I'm a perfectionist. Sorry, guys. So, because we are working on a mobile platform where pictures are going to be seen in, you know, our desktops, um, phones, tablets, etc., you know, we want to be working in a color space that is appropriate for that platform. And for that, we need to be working on sRGB. Don't worry, I'll show you how to apply that color profile into your Affinity document. Make a new document so you can press Ctrl N on Windows or Command N. So I'll just go to File, New. And then here we'll pick up this window to start a new document. Um, I already have a preset set for each one of my Instagram profiles. So there's one that's going to be the full screen version. It's going to be 1080 pixels by 1350. You want to make sure that your color profile is set to sRGB. Okay, so now that I have my picture set, again, keep in mind, this is going to tell you up here what color profile it has. As you can see, we have the sRGB color profile, which is great. 
Something else too is that when you're working on RAW, you want to make sure that before you develop it into the photo persona, because when you're editing in RAW, you're going to be uh, editing in the, I believe it's called develop persona. So all you got to do is go down to the right hand corner where it says color uh, profile and select, make sure that it selects to our sRGB. Because again, we, we don't want to um, work with another color profile that's going to make our colors look all wonky when we post it up on social media. It's going to so when you edit a raw image, it's going to open up in the develop persona. And when you have all your adjustments done, see the, see the way that Affinity works is that you want to edit everything out of the photo persona. But since we're here in the develop persona, first we need to hit the develop button to get there. But so when we develop, we want to make sure that we have the output set as to our sRGB. Hope you're enjoying this vid. If so, please hit that like smash it there you go if you, don't, if you don't hit the like button i will format your sd card so what you can what you can do here is just press c on the canvas and that'll open up the crop tool uh you can also go and go up to the toolbar here on your left it's the fourth one down looks like a little square with a dash in the middle you can control the ratio of this picture by going up to unconstrained and here you have various options so you can range from original ratio so then that way it only shrink or crop within the based on the ratio of the original picture All right you can also do unconstrained which is like you just pretty much free fall it um but if you want to lock it down to the edges you can go up to the magnet here where it says snapping click that and then what you're going to see is that now it snaps to the edges or the corners of your picture right but if you want to change the ratio so the aspect ratios that are most popular on Instagram, right, are the 4 to 5 ratio, the 1 to 1 ratio, and the 1.911 ratio. I think I'll show you guys how to input that in a bit. So, so to customize your ratios, all you got to do is go to the cropping tool and then head up here where it says unconstrained and click on custom ratio. And now here's where you're going to be able to um, manipulate your aspect ratio. So for instance, if I want this to be a 16 by 9 image, there it is. And as you can see over here, it's going to tell me the, the new dimensions of my picture. So you can also put 4, 3, and it can adjust accordingly. 3, 5, 1.91 by 1, and so on. Something else too is that you, you would want to of course upload it as a png file but however many of you are mostly familiar with the jpeg file format so that's also acceptable when uploading it to instagram okay now that you have your file already set to go next thing you want to do is export this right so a way to export this from affinity is to go to file export as you can see there's a command here Control alt shift s so you click that you go onto the jpeg settings right but there's very uh, other uh, file formats you can export this to. I would recommend exporting this through as a JPEG file. And again, you make sure that your dimensions are correct. Quality, of course, are 100 because again, this is going to get compressed by the algorithm. So regardless, we want to make sure that we have the highest quality uh, image export for resampling. There is a difference for resampling. I like to pick by cubic just to have that sharpness effect going. Um, I'll post a screenshot here uh, on the difference between bilinear and bicubic since they both seem to be popular when exporting pictures i mean you can post in png as well it should have been no difference from posting jpeg but you know this is for you out there who are just gonna get in there and you know aren't familiar with affinity and just need a quick reference to post something on instagram and then you just hit export you select your destination select the file and then just click a save if you want to make any further adjustments to this picture later on, you can always go to File, Save As, and that will save the file of Affinity. This, this will save it as an Affinity file, not as a JPEG or a PNG. So you can come back to this and open it up with all your effects and everything if you want to edit your picture further down the line. One thing with Affinity that I realized is that they have their resolution based out of a DPI 
or dots per inch but something to consider about that is that dpis are usually meant for printing measurements so it's what the printer uses so that it can know how much it should print on the paper um, what we're looking for is ppi pixels per inch because that's what's going to determine that's going to determine the quality of our picture for instagram so we got to make sure that we have a high ppi but also what's the equivalent because affinity only has dpi in their platform so we got to make sure we match the ppi on that okay y'all so i just came back from doing a small test on whether or not your dpi affects the quality of an image whenever you post it on instagram right so as you can as you can see from the screen recording uh, there's practically no difference whether you're using 72 300 or what i used 762 dpi right uh, based on an article i saw online they were saying that uh 300 dots per inch is equivalent to 118 pixels per inch so based off that math i was able to calculate i mean i can post that article on, on the description for reference so you can look for yourself but again overall practically there's no difference at least visually aesthetically and so yeah that's pretty much my method on how to post high quality images from affinity into instagram so i hope this video helps you out in some way or another Again, I hope you learned something today. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it that like. Uh, if you found value in this video, make sure to please subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Alright, stay creative.